Last month, UAD released this analog machine plugin. If you missed it when it was free or think that the $199 price tag is an absolute scam, let me show you how you can create something even more powerful for no money at all. UAD had a fantastic ad campaign for this device. Chances are, if you produce, you and your friends probably saw it. It does look like a fantastic plugin, but let me tell you, with one drive knob and the emphasis to upgrade in order to grab more machines, even with the soon to be $199 price tag, this is a bare bones basic tool and it doesn't enable you to learn anything about sound. Let me show you how we can emulate it and even improve upon it. As always, if you don't want to follow this tutorial, then you can grab the device from the Patreon alongside 200 other devices, tools, and templates. And it will always cost you less than a cup of coffee. Okay, so down here is what we're looking to create by the end of this video. I've created an age pot that allows you to kind of switch through the devices. We can obviously saturate. We can kind of tilt the EQ, the color of the saturation, make it brighter or darker. And of course we can up the drive as expected with every kind of saturation device. But I've also added this attack to make things a little bit choppier, or a little bit more sustained. And we can add flutter as well. And we can change the wobble amount as well. You might want to add some tape hiss. So I've included that too. These are all things that I would expect from a saturation device for less than $200. So how do we go about learning from Verve's device and then replicating something that is similar or more powerful? Let's get into it. So for now, we're gonna turn that off and we're just gonna grab the UAD device. Now, when you're working with a new device and trying to learn about what it does to the sound, I like to use this volume compensator from LAEX. It's pay what you want, but I would strongly suggest supporting the creator. This is such a fundamental tool that I use to learn about sound. Basically, it adjusts the loudness added by third-party devices. So if you're really trying to understand saturation or a compressor, you can just listen to what the tools are doing without any volume added. A lot of companies add volume to their third party device. So as soon as you bring it into your project, you think, ah, loudness equals better. But that's not always the case. So what we're gonna do is add the volume compensator, set it to send and set it to receive here. Now, when we listen to the device, we can see if it's adding any extra volume. So we're getting maybe 0.5 volume added to this device. We'll also want to add spectrum or an EQA just so that we can see what is actually happening to the sound as well. So as I go through the devices, I'm really listening to what's happening to the sound. You'll notice with the vintage eyes, the only thing that I can do is increase the gain. But there's also some pitch warble going on as well. And I really wanna be able to adjust the amount and the rate of that, not just switch through different devices with different kind of colors to the sound. Even if I go up to where the presets are, I just flick through the four devices with just a different amount of drive selected. I really wanna have more control over the intricacies of my device and learn about what it's doing. With third-party devices, they'll add cryptic kind of names to their devices. So even with the name of Analog Machine, if you're a new producer, Producer, you wouldn't automatically recognize that this is a saturation and distortion device. Okay, so we recognize that there's some kind of saturation going on and there's also maybe some pitch wobble, some distortion, and maybe even some tape hiss or crackle in there. So they're gonna be the first things that I gravitate towards. We don't want this device to get too loud, so we're also gonna add a limiter and maybe an EQ. I'm gonna do this on a new track. I'm gonna choose an audio effect rack. And to get started, I'm gonna drop a limiter into where it says drop audio devices here. And then I'm gonna duplicate that limiter inside our chain list here. Select chain and then drag this out and drag this out. What we can now do by selecting these brackets is create a dry device and a wet device. So all of our wet devices will go in this one here and we can name this wet and then we'll keep this limiter one completely blank and we'll call this dry. So then what we want to do is select this macro here and then on this very last one, I'm gonna rename this dry wet. And we can right click this tiny little blue bracket and assign that to dry wet. So as we scroll through, we'll be able to go from dry 
to wet. Let's stay on wet and continue to add some devices. So we said that we're gonna add maybe a saturator, or we could add raw. We get so much control with this new raw device, it would be a shame not to use it. So we're gonna put this before the limiter. To create different kinds of sounds, I'm also gonna use cabinet. And cabinet can be coupled with an EQ3. And then we know we're gonna create some like vinyl distortion kind of thing. So we can add the vinyl distortion device at the end as well. For now, I'm gonna keep that turned off. I like to name my devices to get started so I kind of have a roadmap of where I'm headed. So we're gonna call this first one age, then saturate, color, drive. This last one will be the attack, flutter, wobble, wobble amount, and tape hiss. With all my devices, I color them in a way that ensures you know they're kind of in keeping with the similar color. So saturation, color, and drive, they're all kind of doing a similar job, whereas the attack is doing something very different. Awesome, so from here, it's all about assigning macros. I wanna assign the cabinet to age. This way, when I cycle through these different cabinet options, it will feel like a different device. Maybe I don't want the cabinet on for the first click. So I'm gonna hit map again and choose the bypass option and map that to age as well. With the device on selection up here in the top left, I'm gonna set that to about four. And that means with the first few clicks, the device is actually off. And then as I increase this knob, you'll see that the device turns on. The cabinet gets a little bit bassy towards the end. And I wanna stop that from happening. So I'm also gonna assign the gain low to the age as well. I'm gonna invert this selection. Set the first option to zero and the second option to maybe like minus 20. As I increase age, you can see that the EQ3 actually reduces the bass. Okay, so from here, you of course wanna assign your main saturation tools. Drive is easy, it's of course gonna to go to drive. Maybe we want it to start on zero and not go below that, so we can hit zero here and then maybe we can have it go to 15. With the device at the Patreon, I actually blended raw, with a chorus ensemble and a saturator at the end. So this is doing all the vibrato stuff. Saturator is at the end, just add in a little bit of drive as well. So you get a nice combination of kind of like saturated frequencies. I'm gonna map tone to color. And then that way we can have a brighter sound or a darker sound. It's bringing out all the highs. And this is giving it a darker tone. So it's kind of like saturating those lows a little bit. And of course, a mount is gonna head over to saturate. That's already super helpful and has way more control than this free Verve device because we can actually control the saturation amount, where we tip the color or the EQ, as well as how much drive we add. The next thing I wanna do is add a drum bus. Now, of course, we won't always use this for drum processing, but the great thing about drum bus is it actually has this transient shaper built in, which means you can kind of cut off the overtones if you pull that transient shaper to the left, or you can give it more of a sustained tone if you pull it to the right, which really feeds into the saturator nicely. We're gonna right click that and map that to attack. So this is already more powerful than the UAD device because we now have a way to tame the transients of our sample or our instrument that we're processing. Have I told you about DistroKid recently? I'm sure I have, but if you're new here, I release all of my music with them. The main reason is the distributor makes it so quick and painless. I fill in the details about the track, upload the artwork, and I'm good to go. If I don't have artwork, I can create it via DistroPick. And if I'm new to putting out music professionally and need help mixing it, I can use the Mixier tool to get a louder, more dynamic mix as well. So all of that monotonous, confusing stuff is taken care of. To get 7% off your first year and support the show, use the link in the description below. All right, cool, let's do some flutter stuff. If we come over to raw and maybe set this to parallel, maybe with our stage two, we can set this to a diode clipper. And then with our filter, we can set this to comb. With the comb residence up and our frequency moving, we can get some really cool pitch wobble stuff. So if that's gonna move a little bit, we need to assign it to some things. So first of all, I wanna be able to assign this frequency to LFO2. We're gonna pull that all the way down, come back to mod sources, LFO2, and then make sure that this is on the sawtooth. Cool, so that's moving kind of randomly. We can change the rate if we want. I'm gonna set it to free and pull that rate down and then morph it. Cool, so it's kind of doing some random stuff, but if you don't want it to get too loop-based, you can also add an LFO. Take it off mod, select map, that's now gonna move between zero and 20,000 kilohertz. I'm gonna keep it on sign, but bring that rate down a little bit. And I don't want it to go all the way to zero. 
So we'll just keep this around sort of like 54 and 95. I think that's really cool. So the only thing that we have to map is the resonance over to flutter. As we pull that flutter down, we don't get any kind of pitch wobble. Take that up. And that'll be doing all kinds of weird bouncy pitch stuff. But do experiment with this and get really crazy with your own device if you're following this along. Next with the wobble amount, I like to add a chorus device. This can go after the saturator. You're gonna set it to vibrato and we're just gonna control the rates and the amount. And that's really easy because we can set the amount to wobble amount. We can set the rate to wobble. Now we can dial in how much we want our pitch to wobble, of course. The last thing that we wanna do is create some tape here. So I'm gonna come all the way to the end. I've got this vinyl distortion device. And what I'm gonna do is also add the vocoder. Adding the vocoder to this device is gonna give us all of that lush, like kind of white noisy hiss stuff. So we're gonna set it to eight bands, pull the depth down. I think of this as activity and the foreman I think as brightness. We wanna dial in some hiss. So we can take that volume crackle up. We pull this depth down, we'll get more of a constant white noise rather than a popping sound. And like I said, formant to control kind of the pitch of this device. Again, to make this more of a constant, I can increase the release and get rid of some of those bassy tones as well. I'm gonna map both the density and the dry wet to tape hiss. And now I can control how much kind of tape hiss there is. And that's basically it. In its simplest form, that's pretty much what I've done with the Patreon device. The learning comes when you take that Verve device and then start comparing it to your presets. I've been kind of cheeky to copy the first four presets of this device. So we have Sweeten, Warm, Thicken, and Vintageize. And with my device, you have Sweet, Warmth, Thick, and Old School. Recreating a device can really test your knowledge and your listening skills. So I'm gonna go between kind of listening to Sweeten and then trying to dial in a sweet preset on my own stock device. So let's get rid of everything so we can see both of our devices. This is what my sample sounds like alone. We've heard it enough by now in this video. If we add the first preset of the UAD device, we get this. So it's just brightening the sound a little bit. That's all we wanna do with our preset. As we cycle over to warmth, we're starting to introduce a little bit of that saturation. If we wanted to, if we liked the sound of that, but we just wanted to create a little bit of flutter or a little bit of tape hiss, we could. And that's essentially it, rinse and repeat. Go to the next preset of the device you're trying to recreate and then recreate it in your stock plugin. Another side effect and added bonus is the Verve device is always gonna be a bigger CPU impact than my stock device as well. So not only are we learning about sound and learning what we do and maybe don't need to pay for, we're also making it just way easier on our system to process these sounds in our project as well. So there we have it guys. What did you think of that new UAD plugin? Do you think it was worth the near $200 price tag. What else is out there that you think needs a free alternative? Let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to take a look and try to help you create it. Thanks as always for stopping by. Don't forget that I've got a brand new podcast out, which I'm super, super proud of. It's here on the channel. The first episode is with the amazing 10 times Grammy nominated Damien Taylor. Check it out. I think you're gonna get a lot from it and I'll see you next time.